And a very good morning to everybody uh, who have tuned in today to watch this Premier League match between Cork Harlequins and Middleton. Uh, my name is Joseph O'Mahony and I'll be your comment commentator for the day. And uh, as the players take to the field, uh, just give you the the team. So Cork Harlequins is captained by Kieran O'Reilly. Uh, then we have wickeeper Shivam Kizle, Matthew Booster, Adam Hickley, Ryan Joyce, uh, Mubin Ali, Zubair Hassan Khan, Brandon Kruger, Senan Jones and Joe Horahan. From Middleton, Zuhair Shah, Naman Gandhi, Rob Smith, Captain Majid Khan, J- Jose George, uh, Keeper Jeff Hitchmo, Farouk Fayaz, Ashan Azim, Saeed Urem, Ur Rayman, Christian Laubersha and Anoop Pilali. So... It's Middleton who won the toss and elected to bat. And we have Zuhair Shah and Naman Gandhi who are batting for Middleton. And Declan and Greg are the umpires today. So Zubair Hassan Khan will get us underway. This is a test broadcast. So uh, now and then I'm not going to be commentating. And you'll have a bit of silence. We're missing our boom mic today. Um, So apologies for that. But here we go. umpire
Boss. How are you, man? I'm broadcasting, Sharad. Don't very be. Very good, very good clarity. I know, but there is no commentary. Oh. I'm looking for that. I'm watching the match now. Okay, no ca commentary. Okay. Second one. All right, dude. Thanks so much. Go on, talk to the bit. Yeah, yeah. Actually, lovely. I'm, I'm happy to see. <laughs> okay, okay, Thank okay. You so much. Bye. I've been waffling on and there's no feckin' con- I don't know where it's- where I'm going wrong. Yeah, but there's- if there's no commentary then it's awful. I don't, lads. Wish Eric was here, like, fucking hell.
Right. Testing, testing, testing. I don't know if I'm on. Hello, hello.
Testing one, two, one, two. I can't hear. We might have com comments if we if we we've got it. And five whites. Thank you very much. White M. Appreciate it. So that was five there. I tell you what, it's so stressful doing this, lads. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's keep going. Um. So five whites there. Uh off Zubair. Two, three, four, five. Right, so all has been happening since I tried to do a bit of commentary earlier on. Uh three wickets down. Milton are forty two for three. I think it's about forty five for three. Um we have a score around as well. Uh umpires are Letting the score know who took the catch. But of course it was Sennon Jones. And it was a top class catch in the slips. Um, right, so uh, we'll start again. Monologue. Uh, so welcome to today's Premier League match between Cork Harlequins and Middleton. Harlequin, Middleton won the toss and elected to bat. Which is a bit surprising considering uh, it's the first game on grass up in Farmer's Cross. Uh, and in early May but they chose to do so and they had a good start we get to bring, have a look at the scorecard Zuhair Shah was out the second ball for no runs bowled by Zubair Hassan Naman, just you saw there was caught by Sennon Jones, bowled by Zubair. 13 runs off 17 balls with three fours. Rob Smith, the dangerous Rob Smith, with four fours, was caught, caught L leg before wicket by Sennon Jones for 17 runs. So currently we have the captain, Majid Khan. You can see they're talking to Matthew Brewster, number eight, for Harlequins, and Josie George. He was on strike. No, we don't have. And Zubair in again. For a, a couple. So I'm by myself today, but I do see one or two people knocking about. So hopefully we'll have uh, a co-commentator in the next five, ten minutes. Zubair with his third ball. It's long stride coming up. Ball kept a bit low that time. Jose was trying to stretch. So Middleton top the table currently with two wins out of three, or two out of two, I think. And Quinns have one win out of their one game. So this is a top of the table clash. He strikes that quite not as clean as he would have liked to. Kruger fields. Another dot ball. 
Tis a, a little bit breezy here, but Farmer's Cross is known for the breeze. And in fact, a, a bit of, there is a little bit of heat, which is surprising as well. Bit of a darkish day. And that's well struck by Jose for a four. So on to coming this over and Milton move on to 48 for three of 6.5. This is a 50 over game in the Premier League. Both teams will be delighted to be playing on grass as the National and Irish Senior Cups are looming in two weeks' time. A wild strike by by Jose George. I think he could have created a little bit of power there. Good wind turbine. And a dot ball to end the over. So, score is 48 for 3 off 7. Senan comes on for his fourth over. Quinn's keeping faith with the two to those in slip. Kieran O'Reilly and Matthew Brewster. Ubi Nali is in the gully. Square leg is Dewan. Point Adam Hickey. Cougar being brought into a short mid on position. Joe out in the ring. Oh, and that's an edge. True third slip, I would imagine, for a boundary. Majid, Majid gets off the mark with a boundary. Well placed. Jones runs in. Can with a kind of a false shot off the edge of the bat. Most of the boundaries today have come from, from cutting. Haven't seen a straight one yet. And again, out to Hickey at a point. Another dot ball. So as I was saying, both teams are looking forward to in two weeks' time. Quinns travel up to the mighty Dunamana in the Irish Senior Cup. Jones comes in and driven. Going for a quick single. Easy single in the end. And Middleton, they go up to close to Tato Park where they take on Knock Harley. So it's good for them to be bo both playing on grass wickets. Jones comes in again and well fielded by Adam Hickey for a dot ball. One to come in this over now. Rosie pulls out. That 
That's driven straight, and that's a beautiful b- shot and a beautiful boundary. The end, the over. One at the start and one at the end. Nine off that one. So Middleton move on to 57 for three off eight overs. A great start. Umpires are converging together. I think there might be some people running down the middle of the track. Will there be a warning? So give me a right telling to the, the two batsmen. So the ball has been found. Only went across the road. Normally it's difficult if you haven't been up in Farmer's Cross. There is a road at the back there. And does go into a field. And the farmer hasn't cut it or the cows haven't eaten the grass. It's sometimes fairly impossible to uh, find the ball. So thank you to all joining in today. It's Club Sportscast TV. You may not know, but we also have a podcast, a weekly podcast on SoundCloud. So go and follow us on Club Sportscast. And we're also on Twitter and Facebook. I have to get the plug in. Nice ball to start. Uh, Zoo Bears. Fifth over. Kingsley's coming over to talk to me. Hold your hand, Kingsley. Yeah, of course. Good. Kingsley is also live streaming it or streaming it. No pictures on NV Play as well. But you may as well stick with me today. Zuber second ball in. A little bit fuller that time. Adam cleans up. Back to Shivam, the wicketkeeper. Stop ball. Yeah, later on, hopefully, we'll be joined by uh, Reds coach Ted Williamson. And if you have any uh, questions for Ted, put it into the chat there on on YouTube, and uh, I'll ask away. We'll have to do a bit of a review of their win against the Northern Knights last Thursday. Another dot ball. Which was a tremendous win in the end. Zubair racking up the dot balls now. No pressure on the scoreboard for uh, Middleton. They've started off well. The only little problem is they lost three wickets in the power play. So no, no issue with the long to runs accumulated. Oh, and a swing and a miss. Good ball by Zubair. Interesting to see when or Kieran O'Reilly, captain, start thinks about bringing in the spinners. Will it be after this spell or not? And is that a LBW? No, fuller ball. Probably missing leg. And that's a maiden over.
So only two bowlers used by Quinns today. Zubair, five overs, six wides, two wickets, 29 runs, one maiden and 21 dot balls. While Jones, four overs, one for 24 with two wides and 15 dots. Jones starts his fifth. And that's an appeal. Umpire is not interested. Umpire Greg there, grey hat. That ball. Middleton seemed to be doing a little bit of swinging now. I think they'd want to just uh, ease themselves into this innings. And there we go. Another swing. And Jones, middle wicket, gets his man. Commentator's curse, was it? It was a great delivery there by, by Senan Jones. And Jeff Hitchmo, another seasoned veteran of Munster cricket, comes to the crease. This is the would be the main partnership, I would imagine, for Middleton today. Two very, very good batsmen. But now, Middleton are a little bit of spotted bother. Four, four wickets down in the power play. Just leaves that. Definitely time for these two now to settle in for the afternoon. They need a good partnership now up to drinks and after, say another 20 overs. Jeff drives that one, only to find Howrahan. Oh, and that's a beautiful ball. And he's given full or the Yorker length. Hitchmo falls over. Fantastic ball. He's shaking his head. I don't know whether he's in disagreement or how good a ball that was. Jones is on fire currently. Farouk Fayaz comes the next batsman in. So tune this over. Dot bold. Dot dot. LBW. One more ball for a double wicked maiden.
a lot of chirping and chatter now among the Quinns players. Tails are up. Digging a trench there. The groundsman won't be happy. And he leaves it. That's it, a double wicket maiden. Excellent bowling by Senan Jones. That's the end of the power play. 57 for 5 off 10. I think we'll take that. Quinn's won that power play, definitely. Is there going to be a change? No, they're going to keep... Um, Zubair on. Probably a wise decision. Both bowlers are bowling well in tandem. And I think the pitch is probably doing a little bit. Still no change in the field by Harlequins. I suppose there's nothing they, they need to change. Magic drives that on to Brewster. Better stroke there, finding the gap there for Majid. Take a single. Now look at Farouk. No helmet on. I wonder if that's wise. Strange not to see batsmen these days without a helmet. Facing medium pace bowlers. Fumbled by the keeper there. Still a dot ball. You can hear a bit of flapping around. I bought a gazebo. A couple of days ago, and uh, I don't think I put it up quite, quite well. That's flicked off the pad. Oh, it's a dead ball. No shot offered. Ball re re bowled. You know, that goes down by that. This one may be four, four wides. Stopped on the boundary by Senan Jones. So they only pick up one extra. So two wides there. Ajit is on strike. Driven down sweetly. Beautiful. Beautiful shot. Straight back past the bowler. Four runs. By Majid. Beautiful shot there. 
from the shots of the day. It's always brilliant to... That's some feeling you have when you drive a shot like that. A fuller ball there from Zubair. One to come in this over. Oh no, I think we're missing one, are we? No. We are missing one. Those are dots. 64 for 5. I'm also doing the scoring currently, so apologies, but the uh, score should be correct. Start to Sennon's sixth over. The bounce doesn't seem to be consistent on that end, the clubhouse end. Another dot ball. Puts doubt into the batsman's mind. Whether to drive or come back or... That time, inside edge. And this scrambles through for one. Oh, and he's bowled him. And that's magic gone. Great piece of bowling. Middle stump again by Jones. That's his fourth wicket. That's the sixth wicket to fall now. Middleton certainly in a spot of bother. And they may question whether they should have batted first. So Asham is the next one in. Ashan. Zim. Nice, not lovely looking ball, well left by Ashan. Jones now looking for his first Pfeiffer of the season. Front foot out. And driven to Dawan Meta for no run. Now 
That's the end of the over. That's the 12th gone. 65 for 6. Middleton again in a spot of bother. But they have a, a few wickets remaining. All they need to do is just play the 50. Nothing rash. So there's a change of bowler here for Harlequins. Ryan Joyce comes into the attack. Medium pacer. South African born, moved to Ireland a couple of months ago. His brother played his first game for Harlequins yesterday, Devon, I think scored an 80. And his uncle also played yesterday for the Forts. Did quite well with the ball. So a shout out to all them and to their family members back in South Africa, if you're listening or watching. Slinging action there with, from Ryan. Starts with a dot ball. Had a beautiful ball in. A little bit fuller. Tempt, trying to tempt the batsman. Still two slips in place here. The gully. Fruit blocks that one. Another dot ball. Another dot there from Ryan. Bowling quite well now. Getting into a stride. Oh, and beautiful ball. Fantastic one to end the over with the maiden. Shivam standing up to the wicket. It's 13 overs gone. 65 for 6. The other game going down in the Premier League today. It's been played down the Mardyke between Cork County and Galway. Hopefully we'll have an update there shortly when I give someone a call and if they answer. Um, Jones starts his seventh and he's looking for that fifth wicket. Umpire says no. Sorry about that. Probably going down leg. That's driven nicely. And Ashan picks up his first boundary, first runs of the day. Over the head of Joe. Onto the ditch and retrieved. So 
So I'm delighted I'm joined by in the commentary now with uh, Reds coach, Harlequins player and coach, uh, Ted Williamson. Ted, good morning. How are you? Hi, Joe. How are you? I'm not too bad at all. It's stressful there at times. Why is that? Just to see if the commentary is working, but I'm being told and informed that, uh, yes, it is working. Oh, yeah. It happens. No better Te- man. Technical faults, no better man, yeah. So, you've been watching the match a bit. What are your imp- first impressions of the Quinn's bowling attack? Yeah, I think it, it's 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 kind of like anything, really. Is there enough pressure being applied? Um, it looks like Middleton, I missed the start of it, but it looks like Middleton got off to a bit of a, a flyer based on some width being offered up by the, the Quinn's bowlers. Um but it's it's clear when when you attack the stumps, it's it's like any wicket, I suppose. Really, more than more than anything else, if you attack the stumps, you're going to ask more questions of the batters, and um, you know, with the score as it is, that's you know, obviously wickets down. But could there be twenty or thirty runs less? You'd always be looking at could you have done things differently, I suppose. You know, um, but uh, overall, I think they've stuck to, apart from offering up some width, they've stuck to a decent length, which is key, I think. Jones comes in for his final ball. I was. I think he tried to drive that. Okay, and I think that was based on width. Joe's is obviously the length was there as well, but I think if if width is offered up, then you give these guys their arms and they're going to throw their hands at the at the ball, which I think is where, um, if you look at I suppose a wagon wheel where the runs are scored, there was a lot kind of point backward point, um, initially. Yeah, you're right. I think there were only two or three uh, boundary shots that were driven straight. Mm-hmm. Middleton won the toss, Ted, and chose to bat. Do you think that's a was a strange? Um, I it would, it would I think the key the, in, another key question would, would be if if we won the toss, as in I say we uh, Quinns would what we have done. Yeah. Um, I think as as it's the the first time on grass up in Quinns, you'd certainly want to have a look how it's behaving. Um, but then on the counter side of it is that, you know, wickets change as the day goes on. So therefore, if Middleton can get, you know, up to 120, 130, is that a good score depending on if their bowlers can um, put pressure on our guys? So you never know really. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I suppose it, I I personally don't like this analogy or this thought process of it's better to lose the toss um, because that means realistically you don't know what you want to do and I yeah. think that's wrong personally I think you should know what you want to do and you know when people say oh you're better off losing the toss and make the other team make the decision I mean that's fine um, but that's the first sign of maybe offering up a bit of control to the opposite. So look, I I think it's uh, I'm not sure what we would have done. I hadn't talked to the lads. Um, do you know? No, I don't. Um, like I would have m- my my own personal um, modus operandi would always be runs on the board. Um, but that depends on your strength as well. If um, if it's I confidence as well, isn't it? Yeah. In the team. But what's your strength? I mean, um, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about Stormont in a minute, but mm. we, we kind of went down the route there of early season um, wicket, the depth in our batting. Um, you know, we've, we have we bat down to 10 or 11, if you like, so we kind of backed our batters to chase down whatever was set because we said we wanted to see what the conditions were like, first of all. Um, first time in Stormont, still May, do you know, so... Um, I think ultimately, I think ultimately, it, it, it one hand one bounce there. They were yeah, looking for a little stumpy. Yeah, ultimately, it, it kind of depends on if you perform in both disciplines. Well, all three, I suppose. But with your bowling and batting, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter if you if you nail your your kind of objectives with the bat and the ball. Good defence there by Farouk, and that's the end of the over. One off it with the wide. Um, so Joyce uh, starting his 
bowling career well up in Farmers Cross. Yeah, I was looking at the the deliveries and the pitch, the way it's playing. Seems there been to be a bit of bounce on the the city end, and it's low bounce, variable bounce in the um, down the clubhouse end. What I noticed about some of the Middleton players that they're not going on the, the front foot, which is especially on grass, it's key in early May. It is, you know. and and like also playing straighter. I think you have to play straighter earlier. Like so, you look look at hitting wide V or V. Yeah. Um, you know the wickets just have no pace in them at the moment. No. Anywhere, there's no um, heat. That's the that's the reason. I mean, like for those that don't know that are out there, um, when you roll, you roll not only to get it flat, but also to take the moisture away. And it's the heat that takes moisture away to make it like the as they call it a road. But if there's no heat there the moisture is still stuck in the ground and that's why you'll have tracks that are slow and and low bounce and potentially that's what's happened here early, but it's early May. Oh, oh, absolutely. I, 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 you look at the scores up at Leinster yesterday um, in the League Cup, um, if I've called it correctly. Um, Sorry there, Ted. Uh, just a change in bowler. Dewan Meta comes on, replacing Senan Jones and a good spell there by Jones taking... Uh, Four four wickets. Sorry, Ted. That's okay. Um, th- there hasn't been many big scores, so it's all you know. Some things around two hundred, one eighty, two ten. So you're kind of saying, well, if if they're winning scores, how do we get there as a batting unit? Um, and I just think playing across the playing across the line or trying to hit it too square when the ball is straight is just a recipe for disaster. When it's early, yeah, in the season, when it gets into kind of. You know, the start of June, July, August, and the wickets are harder and better for batting, if you want to call it, then you can start fiddling around with your hitting zones. But, um, and it is a, it is a adapting, Do you know, it's, it's, it's a case of adapting um, to what's in front of you. A good fuller delivery there by the one. Um. I was mentioning earlier on, I don't know if everyone heard, because <laughs> I was chatting for about 20 minutes, and then I received a call, uh, no one can hear you, so, oh. yeah, <laughs> and I had a great spiel, I thought it was wonderful, but there you go. Um, I was mentioning there that um, both teams, just wait for this ball here now, fourth one of the ones over, oh, and it's bold, again, low bounce. I don't think there was uh, that front foot never came out for that shot yeah, I, either. I, I, the bounce didn't matter in that one because it was so full, Joe. I think it was up, in, up around his Yorker. It saw that the bounce um, was going to hit the stumps one way or the other anyway. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a good ball. I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> if you want to look at it objectively, is is Dawan trying to bully Yorker there? Mm. I wouldn't think so. Um, but and therefore the batsman's not really expecting it. So. Yeah. Um, Look at the end of the day, it's it's it's. I, I think he's probably surprised him a bit there because, I mean, per, if, if if I was batting out there myself, I wouldn't be expecting a Yorker this time of the innings. So, um, I'd say just good ball and surprise the batter a little bit. Absolutely. So, side Rayman, also known as Bob, comes in. We may see him uh, later on. Um, Bowling through of his little spinners. So we'll just hand it over. We'll go through the scorecard. So uh, as I was mentioning there earlier on, Ted, uh, both teams are playing in in the Irish Senior Cup and National Cup. Um, Middleton generally play on artificial wickets and I think this is a great chance for them to learn this season about playing on grass. They also play Cork County next week, so it's a nice run-in to play uh, against Knock Harley in a few weeks' time. The meta comes in again. It's a wide ball, and not stopped by Zubair down the boundary. So they scramble through for a extra two wides Yeah, there. I think you're right, George. It's, uh, no matter what way, you, again, you slice it, you, you have to adapt because a lot of teams... Um, in Munster play on artificials and it's a different game there's no doubt about it yeah. so you have to adapt um, I think I think the key thing for these batters is 
not change nor going away from their natural game too much. But having said that, you just can play with the freedom um, that you have on an artificial. I think a leg boy will be called in that one. And that's right. And umpire Greg gives the signal for a leg boy. The one string down down leg a lot now. Yeah, he could be looking like sometimes bowlers get greedy, you know, um, mm. and he could be looking to target the stumps a bit more um, because of the the conditions. Um, That's well driven there by Bob, to and scrambles through for a single to end the over. Oh no, I'm wrong. I think the end of the over. Hopefully there'll be a dot ball here, so I'm up to date with the scores. So Quinn's bringing Kruger into kind of a pincer move, pincer position. Showing a bit of intent. I'd probably have one more fielder in front of the wicket mm. in the conditions as opposed to behind the wicket. Um, just purely just purely into the conditions and the slowness of the wicket. That's a dot ball. That helps me with my scoring. Thank you very much. That's the end of the over. Successful over for Dewan. So Middleton move on to 74 for 7 of 16 overs. Let's just have a quick look at the scorecard. So Shah was bowled by Zubair in uh, the second ball of the innings. Uh, a, a lovely a, a caught behind by, or edge, sorry, into slips by Jones for a bowl by Zubair. That got Naman on 13. Smith then went LBW to Jones on 17. Majid was bowled by Senin. Uh, Jose George bowled again by Senin. Jeff was LBW by Jones. Jones is four wickets. Farouk is not out. It's the gentleman without the helmet. Uh, Ashan then was bowled by Dewan. Joy starts off his third over. Dot ball. Bit of bounce there. Yeah, bit of carry. And Bob Said is not out. So looking through the bowling figures. Zubair seven overs. Two for 36. Uh, Jones, I think it was six overs because I didn't give Ryan the other over. Uh, four for 29. And Joyce is two overs. Uh, one. Not a bad start for for Ryan. What's the total there, Joe? Sorry. 74 for seven. Yeah, just looking at the the scorecard again, um, probably too many boundaries littered in there. Yeah. Um, probably more than half the total in boundaries. Um, which would which would lead you to believe that the, there was a, a lack of accuracy maybe, or maybe guys were searching for cop behinds or something, but um, that'd be the only kind of thing you'd say that you'd be critical of from a Quinn's perspective. Um, as... As you said earlier on, they were bowling a bit, bit of gave a bit of width, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of cutting going on. It was a bit of a very slingy action, um, Joyce, wasn't he? Yeah, I think, I remember um, facing him for the first time, and um, because he doesn't have... Nicely nice put. Shot there through yeah. mid wicket for two, maybe. They're coming back anyway. Will they take the two? They will easy enough. Yeah, he's he doesn't really use his front arm a whole lot, and there's no bound. So when you face him first, he kind of comes on. He's not quick at all. He's he's medium at best, but he actually comes on to you a little bit quicker through the air than you think because of the fact that there's no bound or uh, gather or such. Yeah, uh, kind of skips through. He the can, yeah, ru kind of runs through it. Yeah, you're right. And in fact, there is a skip there. I'll spot a coach. Um, but he, no, he's, he's, again, I think he's, 
uh, vertically challenged, let's say. Um, yeah, here. To, to say the best. Come here. To, to say it now. There's nothing wrong with it, though. <laughs> um, and I think if he, his, his main attribute would be if he can attack the stumps, that the ball um, should be hitting the stumps most of the times. Yeah. Um, so you got to use you got to use what you have. You got to use the tools that you have. You know, um, which for the most part I think he is. Again, probably strain down leg too much, but um, yeah, useful useful operator with the keeper standing up, especially. Absolutely. Top blocking there by Shivan behind the stumps, old school using the pads. <laughs> Who was the lad f that played for Waterford years and years ago? There was a couple of English lads played for Waterford. One of them was a keeper. There was Matthews, Kirby, and there was another lad. Right. And he was he was a proper, if the ball, when he was standing up, if the ball was down by his ankles, he wouldn't even no. go with his hands. No. It was just top locking, man. First actual cut I've seen, proper cut today. Um, unfortunately, the Brooke didn't get a run out of it. So, Ted, um, we spoke during the week on the podcast regarding the Munster Reds and that you were looking forward to it. Um, you had a great day up in Belfast on Thursday. Uh, were you happy, firstly, with the result? Uh, yeah, obviously we Opposite, were. Sorry. you, you got to be happy with, with, with a win. Um, you know, especially going up to their place. Um, you know, their home ground. Um... So c coming away with a win, you know, is is a great start to the fifty over, um, the IP fifty for us, um, and like always, you come away saying, you know, what could we have done differently, and um, you know, the the scary thing for us, I suppose, is that there's plenty that we could have done differently, um, which is a positive, you know, I, I would have said, um, you know, certain things with the ball that we could have done better up front in the power play, um, use the conditions a bit more. Um, I mean, we went through some stuff after the match, and you know, to to give you, I suppose, a bit of context about what I'm talking about is we. It's a nice shot. And there. the shot, yeah, absolutely. And a nice welcome boundary. Very unorthodox, but effective. Um, so yeah, like so in in, in the power play where. The conditions like where it's a it's a quarter to eleven start. Um, mm -hmm. We chose to bowl first, and I think sometimes when you choose to bowl first, um, where there's conditions in your favour, there's actually pressure on the bowlers to use them. Um, but within within the power play, um, there was probably I think it was either sixteen or eighteen balls that the Knights batters left. So that's that's nearly three overs out of ten where we didn't put them under enough pressure I suppose to put if you want to put it that way so that's something that we could do a little bit better um, using the conditions in the power play a little bit better um, they had a bit of a stand um, we came back in the middle Mike Frost put the brakes on big time superb operator he's just growing in, in confidence and growing in his skill set game by game um, he bowled extremely well in partnership Um wide ball there by Joyce it is. he does tend to stray down um, so I, and then and then we, we had a kind of um, a period where we I think in a space of about maybe 15 20 minutes where we we dropped a few catches and threw a five overthrows and we just kind of went off the boil as you as, as can happen in any match you know um, so realistically if if you're being really honest about it, we probably should have had them for closer to two hundred than than the score that they got. Um, thought Murray was a bit unlucky, um, and then PJ and Tyrone Kane, the captain and vice captain, really showed that if you apply yourself, what you can do, and it was hard, it was hard, and they they batted, 
to respected the good balls and batted like you you should bowl or should bat early on. Um, had a bit of a, a wobble then in the middle and and Matt Ford dropped on five. I think was a key one for oh, us yeah, because absolutely. his timing, the timing of his innings was superb. Like he he. Um, his acceleration towards the end. Yeah, he just timed it really, really well, and Fionn, um changed the batting order. Brought brought Davy in as a left hander because he was gonna, you know, they were gonna follow up Humphreys with Ben White. So there was yeah. balls. Um, there by Brandon Kruger. There was gonna be a lot of balls turning away from right hander, so there's a bit of a change in the order um, to combat that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know. Um, but Fionn as well, I think, timed his. His innings quite well and and waited for the for again for his ball to hit. Um. So yeah, look, this 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 it's like anything. You're absolutely delighted with the win, um. But you're always kind of looking at things oh, that can, we could have done improve. differently because that that's that, that's what you you aim to yeah. do in every match, isn't and, it? And there's so much improvement in cricket. You know, it's not just like and that's a lovely shot driven to the covers. Oh, he slips. He won't go for a boundary, but I think they'll pick up two. Brilliant work there. You mentioned earlier on about um, dot balls and Northern Knights with their, the amount of dot balls they make backed up. I was surprised by Sterling's tentative start to his innings. Um, oh, no, that, that was purely just down to the lads bowling well. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I mean, um, Davy bowled superbly Tyrone Kane was perfect for those conditions so I think in fairness to Sterlow he just batted the conditions he batted the, the situation you know um, and then he he accelerated um, when the first change came on I think yeah. um, would he I'm going to run through for a leg by there I think Frosty when Frosty came on then he applied some pressure so it made um Started to do something maybe that he he didn't want to Chopped do or should on, have. He? Yeah, he was going for yeah. a slog sweep and yeah. inside edge, but um, it's probably one of his one of his strengths, I suppose, against spin. Um, you always said to me about if it's your strength, it can also be your weakness. Yeah. I cut and cut and cut, but that's my weakness too. <laughs> Farouk looking. Telling Bob to stay where you are. Probably change this up now if I was um, Quinns. I think it's 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 getting a little bit comfy for these two batters. Yeah. Um, probably bring the two spinners on and, and see what they can do. It's just a little bit of momentum changing, I think, now. I agree, yeah. It's a crucial period in the game for Middleton. Top. Yeah, that's proper take a picture of that one. <laughs> That'll be in the ECB <laughs> coaching manual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Level two. <laughs> so it's it going back to your original question of the win, delighted to win, and it sets up Tuesday now. Lovely because the Lightning won their first one. We got across the line in our one. Um, so yeah, crucial, a crucial one next Tuesday up in Pembroke against the Lightning. A lot of wides creeping in here now into the Quinns. That's one thing I've noticed about all games, and I keep harping on about it all around Munster, are the amount of extras given away. Like, played in a game yesterday against Waterford, they gave away 60-odd extras Whoa. in a 40-over game. Um it's all I think it's just a skill set, Joe. I think, I think it's... Think it, is that yeah, what it I is? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's just... Um, I mean, you you talk, you talk at into pro level or whatever you mm. want to call it. A, a slightly higher level, about it in the top of off or, or you know, with with club stuff, you should be try, at least trying to hit the stumps as much as you can. Or, um, I I don't necessarily mind the ones that are outside off. Yeah, I don't necessarily mind that. Um, but the ones on leg to me are, I just struggle with that one a little bit because they, I I I don't particularly see it as bowlers being greedy and trying to you know if they are bowling a bit of a way swing um, that they're trying to start the ball a bit straighter so it might, might go outside off or tail outside off or whatever it is um, 
So I think it's just a skill set, lads, just dragging down. So, like, when you go to the High Performance Centre, I'd say weekly now at this stage, is it expected, like, do you actually have to think that, oh, my bowlers here, um, I'm f- I fear that they, they're going to be bowling wides all the time, or is it at that level, that standard? No, they don't. It, no. They, they, they just don't. I mean, if it's, um, I think I think what you do find at that level is that lads do get a bit greedy. So if there's a bit of shape on it um, and it's going away, they'll try and start it a bit straighter and it just doesn't it doesn't um, come back enough and it just carries on going down legs. So I think that is that is just lads being a bit greedy. You'll get the odd one, but mm. um, you you would you would I I I could be wrong. I think maybe we had five wides in total the other day. Um, is it acceptable? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Um, you wouldn't have goal. You don't have goals for the amount of extras given, or is that just keep an eye on them? That's all. Yeah. You, you see, you certainly don't want to be framing things up around negative objectives. Yeah. I, we don't want to bowl more than ten wides. Like that's probably a negative way of looking at it. But um, certain extras you can't really control. But the wides and no balls are ones that you want to keep to a minimum. Really, when you start getting into double figures, then you're kind of going. It's wide. 17 fellas diving for that one. I think you're right, Ted. Uh, a change is probably needed from the Harlequin side. I just don't understand. Keep why the guys on? No, no. I, 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 I just don't understand why we haven't turned to spin earlier, especially when you look at um, Brandon and Adam's performance um, against uh, Cork County where they... Adam had five wickets and Brandon bowled ten overs to twelve runs. Mm. I mean, there's an edge there. Did I hear an edge? No. I was going for a stumping. I think. Nothing given. So I just, I, yeah, it's 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 fine. You know, if there's a wicket that's conducive to seamers, let's say it, that's fine saying that. But if you've two bowlers in in the tank that you haven't used that are arguably your two most effective bowlers, surely you get them on straight away. Yeah. Um, just because you're a seamer doesn't mean you're the, the the best man for the job at a particular time in a, a, a block of an innings, do you know? Yeah. And the batters are starting to look comfortable. So they are. They like they're gen- playing very well. If, if it looks easy, it is easy. Yeah. So therefore... I think Quinn's need to be looking at right. How can we make it now a little bit more uncomfortable? Yeah. Um, for the the batters. This extravagant, yeah, extravagant defence. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> he's I enjoying it. Dare I say it? He's looking a bit like Steve Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Bob. Another fantastic defence again. I'll take back Steve Smith. I'll m- maybe go Courtney Walsh. Do you Courtney, Courtney Walsh. Walsh? Yeah. <laughs> I've yet to hear him roar. Wait, dear. <laughs> and straight on leg for a wide. This is very economical. Those figures. Uh, get the scorecard up. Four point uh, eight off his four overs so far. How many wides, Joe? Uh, four wides. He's one in every, nearly one no, in, in every over. In total. Oh, eighteen wides altogether. Eighteen. Eighteen, yeah. What would you think about that, Joe? I wouldn't be happy at this level. But if I was playing in Division 3 or 4, I'd be delighted that after 20 overs or 21 overs, 18 extras. Or 18 wides. So 
So tell me, uh, you had a long old day. Did you travel down straight from Belfast? Uh, yeah. Um, had a had a stop. I can't remember where to stop actually. Um, Castle Bellingham or somewhere like that, and then straight back down. Got back about twelve. Is that up north? Is it? No, no, no. It's just near Dundalk. Oh, really? Um, and yeah, finished. Got back about twelve ish, and into a school for half nine on Friday. Well, the joys. I think they heard. Uh, I think the captain heard you because uh, Kruger is being brought on to bowl. Yeah, I wouldn't go like good good move, and again, I wouldn't go too attacking with the close fielders. I think mm. because sometimes deep fielders can be attacking fielders with the the way the batters are playing. So, um, yeah, I just don't I don't see the need for a slip personally. Especially would you with, with the turn? Like he he gets a lot of turn in fairness. Yeah. But then again. In the Premier Division, there aren't many spinners. You know, Cork County would be stacked with them. Quinns would have two or three. But apart from that, I don't know many other, um, apart from, um, what's his name down in Kerry? Jack. Yeah. So it's a challenge for the batsmen now, facing spinners on grass. There goes the, s- the slip. <laughs> He has to be thinking now that he'll try and run this down. Actually, that's a beautiful shot. Is that going to race away to the boundary? Stopped by Hickey. Beautiful stop. Picks up two runs. Good chase there. But yeah, the athletic Adam Hickey. Working in pairs, good to see. Yep. Always follow your man to the boundary, follow mm. your teammate to the boundary. Back in the back foot. Very good defence. Out to the pitch of the ball. A better pace there as well from Brandon. I thought his, his first couple were, were probably a bit too quick through the air. So mm. Much better pace on that one. There's a floater, that one there. So uh, the Reds now, they're up against Leinster Lightning on Tuesday in Pembroke. Um is there any player that you, I wouldn't say fear, but you've earmarked that, you know, he's one to look out for? Um, I wouldn't say one, one to look out for, but you'd be conscious of a their, danger their, their, their man, their I suppose. I would have Simi, Simeon Ball at the top, Lork, and obviously after getting 100 yesterday, I think he's he's now in a bit of form. So um, Dockers is batting out of his skin for the last two years. Mm. Um even got a few the other day with the ball, so it's you know it's it's um it's about sometimes containment I think as opposed to um trying to get them out. Um, obviously you're trying to get them out, but sometimes when they're in, is containing them. And if you know if they get, if they get a partnership, you're trying to control the run rate more than anything else. But I I think again early season, if you look at the um the pitch in Pembroke early season, it'll be a case of. All our bowlers asking as many questions as many times of their batters as much as possible. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an intriguing battle. Um, mm. You know, we've 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 quite a depth, uh, a, a deep batting order ourselves. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It could be one of the games of. It could be one of the games that could decide where the title is going this year. We mentioned there in the podcast that uh, this is certainly one of the best Munster sides ever taken to the field. Um, that was a wide ball. Ryan boning his wide again. 
Yeah, I think you 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 think I said on the podcast it was on paper mm. the best um the best team that we've put out. Um but as we all know on paper means nothing. Yeah. Um it's about it's about guys performing and um Maybe the cricket, cricket is cricket. It's, it's, it's. I think we said that on the podcast as well the other day. Is about you. Know, you asked me a question about coaching, or maybe it was Eric asked about coaching at this level or Rodgers, dude. Rodgers, uh, Rodgers. Sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, and this. Yeah. Um, he, he missed it. I think there's a missed opportunity there. I think the bales are still on, though. Yeah, they? that's a, It's a missed opportunity. His um, foot was in the air. I think there'll be a fine later on. I think the same thing goes for playing in, at, at all levels. The basics don't change. It's, you know, accuracy and asking questions as a bowler, partnerships with the bat, uh, intensity in the field. No different to any level of the game, really. Um, so, but yeah, it's going to be, I think, I mean, no matter what way you slice it, the, the Lightning are going to be favourites for everything this year, aren't they? And that's, have to be. That's a challenge for themselves, even in that, because there's expectations. Um, Half driven back by Bob, another dot. But uh, the the good thing, the good thing, I think, um, for the way that the fixtures are going this particular season, is the fact that they're all coming thick and fast. So. Is that an edge? And it's gone. It's Great catch by. I think that's the captain, Kieran O'Reilly. That's a superb catch. Absolutely, very low, and yet to, I think it was to his left. I think one of the, one of the, one of the, the really good things about that catch was the ball was dropping on him, and yeah. he's six foot five. Um, but he's got an incredible pair of hands. Um, we we were doing a bit of fielding. Um, a couple of weeks back up here on the boundary and that, you know, relay, boundary relay catching and he was, without a doubt, the best at jumping, catching and getting the ball back. He's a phenomenal athlete for a big bean pole. Um, he's probably earned that. Thinks so you're talking into the microphone. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption there. Mr. Jones is looking for the next batsman in, and the next batsman in is Christian Laubusher, the fiery South African. Or is he South African, though? Good competitor. Yeah, oh, he's fantastic. Good competitor, yeah. you know, he's, he's yeah. um, I remember facing him last year, I think it was, and he's, uh, kind of regardless of what he bowls, he's at you, he's, you know, trying to get into your head a little bit, don't mind that. Yeah, well, that, that uh, wicket broke the partnership, and, uh, I think it was about 30 runs off that. So a nice little partnership for Middleton. We moved to 91 for 8. 23 overs gone. Two to drinks. I think Quinns will be looking, hopefully, hopefully saying this is it. We, we don't want to get to drinks. Another second dot ball. Oh, bit high there. Nice bit of bounce from Kruger. Kruger looking f appealing. He's laughing. I think he knows that uh, there was no way that was going to hit the stumps. Comes back on the back foot, Farouk. Trying to cut it, I think. But he doesn't. And O'Reilly cleans up. And does the same shot again and exact same thing happens. You're struggling with his pace here, Brandon, a little bit. Um, needs to just slow it down a little bit, I think. Is he going to give it? No, not out. The umpire had a, had a good think about it. It was a misrunner opportunity Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Brandon was back at the stumps. 
A leg by signaled by Greg. That's the end of the over. Yeah, just a lack of game awareness there, I think. Um, I think more focused on appealing to the umpire than uh, run, run him out. Sticking with Ryan here again. Unusual decision, but sometimes the players see things differently. Um, in the heat of battle, I suppose. We're, we're, we're like the two Muppets in the... the two lads, what the were they? The Muppets, what the were two lads names? up in the balcony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> know everything, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great take by Shivam. Bread and butter for him. At this stage now, with Fru kind of set, do you think he's thinking, right, I have two weeks to go, should I start thinking about going for it? or Because it looks as though he is. I think without knowing... The player? No, 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 without, without knowing what Christian is like as a batter. Yeah. Um, so, like, if Fru can trust Christian to... Stick and stick around for a bit. They they could be quite happy with knocking around, but um, he might know something that we don't know. Maybe. I think it's it's it, it, it in one way it's quite simple on 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 the wicket because it is slow. It's early season. Is that if 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 there's wits, just throw your hands at it. I think that's probably the right. Yeah. Um. It's going to be a catch. Oh no! I think that was. Uh would have been a better de better effort there by uh, Brewster. Lovely bit of timing there, actually. Yeah. Just really kind of blocked it for four. Beautiful four. A bit of timing. Just shows you there's value for money in the wicket, isn't there? Yeah. So we've been talking about the podcast, and if you're interested, we um, put out a podcast every week, mainly to do with Munster cricket, uh, but also we've touched on Munster Reds, and hopefully in a few months' time we'll be talking about uh, Cricket Ireland and the men's team as they take on, I think, New Zealand and it's just, it's India, so I think. India. First time, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the big one, in India, two T20s. So, um, it's uh, looking for an LBW. So, f you can find us on SoundCloud under Club Sportscast and like and subscribe. We have a good few shows there now. Stop ball to end the end of the over. 96 for 8. Milton coming close to that 100 and a discussion whether to take drinks or not. I think lads might need an Irish coffee today. And they're are they? No, they're not. Yeah, it's quite cold actually, isn't it? Yeah. Just lovely up here yesterday. Mm. How'd you get on yesterday? You were playing uh Limerick Blasters? Yeah, good great one. great game. Yeah. Um We we batted first, got two fifty two, I think. Um right. probably left thirty or thirty five runs behind us out in the well, on the day, um, decent start, de decent through the middle, but kind of fell away toward, towards the end. So we probably left, you know, we said at the start, maybe 240 minimum was, was what we were looking for. So we were a little bit above what we, but we, we had set a really good platform and um, just couldn't quite get it away at the end. Um, and then um, decent opening spell by Esmat and Kanishk. Oh. Um, we didn't do ourselves any favours around some of our catching um, and kind of let one of their batters off who ended up getting mid-70s um, but it was really encouraging to see um, young Zane 
um, come on at a really, really crucial time where the run rate was around sevens and bowled extremely well three overs at a time before we knew we were bringing back our kind of main bowlers for the last eight overs. Um, and then Esmas, Max, Egan, um, and finally Kanish, um kind of really put the brakes on and when, when the run rate was heading towards kind of started going up up dramatically then so much so they were needing 10s off the last four and they were still in it yeah. they, they were still in it they really were especially on the mat and the size yeah. of the ground yeah yeah a lovely oh. day ball was travelling quite quickly over the outfield um, oh, so um, nice floated ball yeah just struggled to get out of I bed this there morning was a, there was a good <laughs> Good partnership uh, for Quinns yesterday between yeah Jack Boss and um, Devin, Devin Joyce they they put on probably close to a hundred. That's gonna um, go. It's again too too quick. Yeah, bowling too quickly. Do you think he he, dr- he gets tried too much dip on that? Well, one? no, he's he, I, <laughs> it, it's kind of a, a common thing with Brandon is that it's if you if you look at how many times the batters play off the front foot against him. Um, well, specifically today, anyway, um, it's it's more they're playing more off the back foot than the front foot, yeah. which is not really um, probably what you want from a spinner. But um, it's the hundred up there now for Middleton. But, uh, I'd like yeah. to see see the team in three figures. You mentioned earlier on about um, you could think par score would have been what one twenty one. 140 even uh, not, not a par score but oh, a good score a good I think score. you know yeah. I think something that you could probably put lads under a bit of pressure with yeah um, because I think I think it's it's um, it was a little bit like storming the other day is that you know you even when you were in you still did, well the lads still played and missed a few times so there was something kind of it was doing something all the time um, unless you were trying to hit out at the end which the lads are doing but um Today is similar, I think. I prefer games like this because, um, with and tracks like this because there's something for everybody. Do you know it's not, it's not just a, a bowling track or a flat yeah. flat batting track, it makes games more interesting. Well, I think you learn as a player. Yeah. You learn um, because you're you're you're, you know, as a bowler, I suppose you're learning to use the conditions a bit more often than you should maybe or and then as batters you have to adapt like I, I watched a really good game down in Cork County they were very unlucky actually against Leinster last Monday where um, I think it was 140 played 132 or something or whatever it was but it was a really last good game of cricket you know? ball, it was a game. yeah really good game of cricket Cork County were very unlucky in that one mm. um, against a decent Leinster side so I'd agree with you I think it just um, it, it just lends to really testing lads Skill sets, skill sets. Yeah. Um, especially with the bat. Have you been hitting any runs yourself lately? It was a lovely day yesterday. Oh yeah, fair enough. It's <laughs> 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 um, driven away by. That's a nice shot again. Yeah. With offered up. Yeah, Isn't, won't, may not go for a boundary, and it doesn't. Uh, but they may take three. They're running the third. Are they going to run four? No, decide not to. But three run by Christian. Yeah, kept wicket for the first time yesterday in a couple of years, and it must be broken. Uh, the legs were struggling to yeah. operate this morning. Calves, isn't it? No more quads. No quads. Quads. Yeah, because right. you're. Um, I stood up, stood up to the wicket for twenty odd over. So yeah. good fun. Enjoyed it. Yeah. But any stumpings or any ca- cut behind? Three catches, I think, Joe. Did you really? Three catches. Yeah. No way. One standing no up to mushy. Um, but hard. That's it's a lovely quick single there taken by Middleton. Yeah, I just baffled a bit here why Adam isn't done, why Adam Hickey isn't being brought on. Um, Are they thinking about more economy than anything else? Well, because uh, but he, 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 
just looking at Ryan, is he is he threatening enough? You know, mm. you, you'd argue Adam is the most accurate bowler in the team. Um, yeah, in, interesting. That's a lovely shot, but unfortunately, no run off that one. So T Ted's going to leave us there for a while. Thank you so much for. Having a chat with us, Ted. Yeah. Hopefully, if you're around there later, you might join us again. Not a bother. Thoroughly Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> he hammers me into the back. He's like an old man walking away. I think he's broken from the wicket keeping. And that was the end of the over. Um, so, m much appreciated to Ted. And stop the recording for the podcast now. Uh, if. Eric Rodders Cotter is out there. We have a bit of editing to do for the podcast. So Kruger here again. From the city end. Starts with a dot ball. He's into his fourth over. Main threat for Middleton currently is Farouk. Playing very, very well. 16 off 50 balls, but it doesn't matter about how many balls you're facing at this stage of the game. Very watchful on that ball. It comes back into the batsman. Again, back in and Howrahan scoops up the ball. A no run. Four dots in this over. Frug sweeps it for a... Will it go for a boundary? I think the ball might trickle over and it does. Down into the car park for a beautiful four. Lovely sweep shot. Is there one left? No. I missed one of the dots. So four off that. Uh, it's 109 for eight off 28 overs. As I was saying, this is a test broadcast. Hopefully during the summer now we'll be um, primarily in June, July and August. We'll be uh, live streaming many games from Munster Cricket. And we'll bring you details of those in the next few weeks. Hopefully maybe next week. Which will be a bit of crack. But we are going to the Oyster Oval down in Kerry on the 25th of May where we're live streaming the match between a Kerry Select team and the MCC. So you can tune into that. Second dot for Ryan. Ryan's economy is very, very good. Roughly about two and over. But as Ted was saying, is he... Is, is he trying... Is, is there a chance to get a wicket? And as just as, oh, just went over Hickey's head. Thought it was going to be the commentator's curse there. And Christian grabs two runs. Nelson now, 111. off the leg I think four leg buys there nice little partnership developing here between Christian and Farouk
Another dot ball there for Ryan. One to come in this over. It's been a good recovery by Middleton after a bit of a collapse earlier on. Fruk, the main, the captain of the ship, I would imagine. Mainstay. Kristen tried to pull that one. But no run, and that ends the over. Milton now 115 for 8 of 29. And we'll just go through the scorecard for those who are joining us. Zuhir Shah was bowled by Hassan Khan after the second ball of the innings. Naman Gandhi was caught by Senan Jones, bowled by Zubair for 13 runs. Rob Smith was trapped LBW by Senan for 17. Majid then was bowled by Senan for 10. Jose George was bowled again by Senan for 10. Jeff Hitchmo, LBW. By Senin again. Sen with four wickets. Farouk, as I said, is not out on 20 with four boundaries. Ashan Asim uh, was bowled by Dawan for four. Saida Raymond was caught by Kieran O'Reilly. Brilliant, brilliant catch in the slips. by Bowled by Joyce for five. And Christian is not out for six. And Anoop is yet to come in to the battle for... So for Quinns, Jones bowled six overs, four for 29. Joyce has bowled nine overs, uh, one for 19. Meta has bowled three overs, none, one for nine. And Kruger has bowled his, starting his fifth over, and he has 11 runs. And Zubair, sorry, at the top, two wickets for 36 runs off his seven overs. And that's, oh, just as big, and there, the main threat, Farouk has just been caught. I think that is Dawan. Mid-off. There's that movie in Ali. Just check there for you. Shivan, there's Dawan. I think it's Mubin. Yeah, it's Mubin Ali, actually, who took that fantastic catch. You may have seen it on the screen. So that's the first one for Kruger. Last man in now is Anoop. Quicker delivery by Kruger. Not happy with it though. Noop just guides it down to Hickey. Oh, and they're looking for an LBW, but I think it was a bit high. Always oh, worth a shout, though. You never know. Umpire might give it. <laughs> 